control. So I guess I, I can so. do the quick outro and where to go from here. So you may have noticed there is feedback for the last day. Please um, fill stuff out. And in the meantime, over here under the schedule on day six, we have concluding remarks and where to go from here. So I will open that up. So first we'd like to thank everyone that helped make this possible. You saw many instructors here, but there were far more people in the background who were basically answering all these questions, doing planning, running the in-person exercise sessions, helping us to prepare and so on. Um, and our web page gives their names, or at least the names that we know of. So please, um, please thank them. So if you attended, there's feedback like usual. You can also let us know directly by email or contact us by our chat, whatever. This may sound funny, but if you haven't registered yet and you're watching this and you would like to help us, please register now. You'll get a post-workshop survey afterwards and it helps with our reporting to show the benefits of the course. There were a lot of questions about what to do if you want to keep studying more. So, we have all our lessons which will stay online. Um, all lessons are open source and will continue to be updated, so they will be improved over time. Our videos will stay available. Um, you can find videos from many of the other workshop instances. We don't really expect the videos to be that useful to for people coming in from the outside, but for reviewing, maybe it's what you need. And we encourage anyone to you know, reuse the lessons, reteach, and so on. You can ask for local support from different partners. So, for example, at our university, we have a team, like many of the instructors here are available any day to answer questions from researchers in this daily grad session. And we would be happy to answer questions related to the topics of this thing. For even more help, well, we're research software engineers and we can basically help you with your projects and put these into practice. Uh, and there's the same in other countries, but I can say a little bit less about them. Um, Radovan, what do you want to talk about the things in Norway, any? Well, about local support, at least we are at, here at URT Chomsa. We started to have weekly office hours. We realized that we need more of this. We are really following the footsteps of Alto. So I believe we will have more sessions, maybe daily, more than once per week. And and also the goal is then at some point to provide it to more than just the University of Tromsø, but we need to start somewhere. So I think the demand is big yes. for our mentoring and helping. Okay. So we have upcoming courses we could highlight. So there's a in-person code refinery in Sweden, and we have dates for the next big workshop in the autumn. This is also live stream, although I guess we have yet to completely confirm it. There's a newsletter on our website, register for that to find it. Um, there's a Python for scientific computing course. We hope to have a workflows course. So there was a comment in the um, chat um, about how does stuff actually put together? And this was the answer here. So sort of see real projects, how people really do things together. And yeah, so hopefully we can get that sometime. We teach a HPC course. There's, well, these other organizations here also have many more courses available. If you'd like a certificate, check the webpage. 
there's instructions there and they will be updated with any further information. It's important. We've talked a lot about GitHub here, and that's been what we've used as an example. But if you would like something that's run by the public sector, there's a GitLab service from Code Refinery, and it's available for academics from the Nordics. So this is a option. Please see the information if you would like more. If you'd like to help out with Code Refinery, well, first off is basically tell people about us um, or come back as an exercise leader. So basically you can form your own groups and then help mentor other people to come here and learn and like run your own in-person or online team to do the exercises. There's other ways to get involved in Code Refinery. You can join our meetings. We have a chat and this is another way you can ask for help. We have a help stream there. As an individual, we have many different things to do. It's not just teaching here. So any kind of help would be welcome. Um, sign up on the newsletter if you would like to know more about that. All of our lesson material and well, really everything is on GitHub and you can contribute using the very things that we have taught today. As an organization, we've been talking a lot about the different partners that are running these in-person exercise rooms and things like that. So if you would like to bring your whole organization on board, well, do it for the next workshop. Run a, run your in, your other, your own exercise sessions. Let us know and we can help with that. And finally, if you really like the kinds of things we're talking about, it's basically what a research software engineer does. It's someone that is a researcher, but is also more towards the software and data side rather than only measuring your impact in publications. And there's an organization called Nordic Research Software Engineers, which would be nice to join. So have I missed anything from the outro? Um, let's see. So any comments from anyone? So yeah, I agree. Today was a bit too fast and too slow at different times. How many people are watching now? I see 100 on HackMD. 82. 82. Okay. So I guess that's the course rooms. Yeah. Um, do we have any, would you like to respond to any of this feedback or whatever? Also, do we have any, because I think program says that we have some like after Zoom party, mm. did we talk about that? No, okay. So if you would like to meet us and talk directly, once we're done with this outro, I'll put a Zoom meeting in the notes. And then you can join and talk to us directly if you would like. So, um, yes, maybe see you then. But yeah, I mean, I think back there's far more material than we can possibly cover in a few days. I mean, even six full days would be not enough and we would start getting really tired there. And we've been trying to, well, in the end, we've basically have had to settle on, we can't do everything, so give people a taste, but I mean, everyone attending here is pretty smart and can figure stuff out themselves with the right support. And that's what we hope to do. Yeah, there's... Oh, where's my cat? 
Is it still resting? Probably. I'll bring it to the Zoom session if you want to say bye. Um, I have some questions how to improve the format. Thought that was somewhere here. So what do y'all think of today, the other co-instructors here? Yeah, um, I, I should learn reading um, timetables and time zones. Um, <laughs> Mm. But in general, I really enjoyed the session, the co, uh, I don't know, pair programming session with Thomas. I think it can be a nice model for everybody to, I learn a lot by see how other people work. Yeah. And it's not just about the programming, it's also about like what editor, how do they use Git, how do they look for answers, how do they search the web. Yeah. I. I just see one uh, latest comment uh, about things to be improved and integrate Git integration with other things. Um, a lot of editors, a lot of uh, tools do have Git integration in some way, um, be it MATLAB, be it Eclipse, be it uh, VS Code or whatever. My personal experience with it is always that I find the um, editor in integrated Git um, usage extremely cumbersome. Because it, it very often leads to, I need to click uh, individual files or whatnot. And it, 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 it's just getting really cumbersome to um, do Git commits and stuff. And going to the command line and just, type, just typing stuff is a lot faster, at least to me. I mean, one can use the... Uh the editor of choice, and, and then I can make the commits to new versions of the files in a terminal that one have next by. Yeah, that, that, that's what I do as well. But I, I can understand um, people, why, why do we not uh, show integration? Uh, like, like, yeah, MATLAB has, has Git integration. Eclipse does have uh, Git um, things. VS Code has Git plugins. Um, and Show, shows what files are are recent version or what, which files are modified and so on. Um, I said, um, as an answer to that comment, my, my personal opinion is just that it's so much more cumbersome to do this in editors mm. or in, in these IDEs. Yeah, I basically also always have my editor and my terminal for doing the commits. Now, now, now so, I'm wondering one thing, and that's a question uh, to you, maybe. Um, what's your monitor setup? I, I know that uh, Richard has a, has a well, uh, crazy setup, but my personal experience is that um, programming with only one monitor is really difficult, or is is a lot less efficient than with more monitors. And I'm I'm just I'm just wondering um, because the. Having only one monitor makes this, um, oh, I would like to have it in the same interface and not go to, to, to this terminal or to a different window. It's a lot more, well, likely. That's at least my impression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't, personally, yeah, I can only recommend people getting a second monitor for development. Yeah. Um, I, I remember having been in a group where I was initially the only one um, and had my second monitor essentially bought privately because I was working with two before I joined that group. And when I left a couple of years later, everyone had two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I was like, oh, yeah. Even yeah. my boss, who a long time resisted getting a second one, when he finally got one, I was like, hey, this is so much more convenient. <laughs> so, Richard... Uh... I mean, two monitors to start, but, but how many monitors are you using? <laughs> so normally for my day-to-day -day work at home, I use three. But then for teaching, I add two more for like some of the other live stream control stuff. And yeah. Hmm. 
Do we have any final words or should we go to Zoom to chat more? We can head over to Zoom or over to the other Zoom room. Okay. So, yeah, well, I guess thanks again to everyone who was here. And we'll, we hope we've set you on a good journey. And, um, Yes. Have fun. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Bye.